Has anyone ever told you something so unbelievable that you just knew it wasn't true? One time, my friend told me she saw a movie star at the grocery store. What if the news was even harder to believe than that? And what if it was actually true? So who's this story about? A famous fashion icon? An artist? Oh, a sports hero. No, <laughs> you're all so cold. It's about Jesus, isn't it? Yes, knew it. Jesus lives. It's also about one of his disciples, Thomas. But to tell this story, first, I should mention Isaiah. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. He's like another disciple? Good question. Uh, no. Isaiah was a wise prophet who lived way before Jesus was born. Very wise. So, he made a lot of money? No, <laughs> he didn't make a prophet. He was a prophet. That means he was a messenger for God. This dude was an all-star. 700 years before Jesus was born, Isaiah told everyone that Jesus, the Son of God, was coming. And when Jesus was born, that meant people finally got to see God in person because Jesus is God. Wait, I don't follow. Why would God become human? To show the world how much he loves them. One way Jesus showed that love was by teaching his 12 disciples to love everyone around them. Oh, so he only had like 12 followers? No way! Jesus had tons of people who followed him. But only 12 were extra close with him. Having 12 disciples was significant. There are 12 disciples because Israel is God's special nation. It was made up of 12 tribes. 12 and 12! Get it? <laughs> but at this point in the story, 10 of those tribes are gone. It was like they had been eliminated from a competition. By picking 12 disciples, Jesus was showing that he was going to restore Israel. All 12 tribes back on the field. Jesus loves us all so much that he died as a sacrifice for our sins. Now everyone gets a chance to have a new life, even people who have rejected God and done wrong things. It's like getting a do-over. It's like being born again, ha <laughs> ha! When Jesus died, people thought that was the end of the game. They didn't know God was gonna raise him from the dead. But his disciples knew, right? It was actually hard for them to believe too. One day, after Jesus had died, they were all together in a locked room and Jesus showed up. He was alive! Jesus lives. They didn't know what to think. They probably thought he was like a ghost or something. But Jesus said, may peace be with you. Then he showed them that it was really him. If they were scared before, they weren't anymore. It's like they were pumped to see their coach again. Then Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. The power of the Holy Spirit is the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I thought the story was about Thomas. Was he with the disciples? Thomas must have been right in the bench because he wasn't in the game that day. Then when the other disciples told him what happened, he didn't believe them. He told them he wouldn't believe unless he could touch the wounds Jesus got when he died. Fast forward to more than a week later. The disciples are all together in a locked room again. But this time, Thomas was there too. And guess what? Jesus appeared to them again. And he knew exactly what Thomas was thinking. He told Thomas to come touch his scars and know for sure that he was really Jesus. So Thomas believed, right? 100%. Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. That's us! We're the ones that Jesus is talking about. We weren't around back then to see Jesus and touch his scars, but we can still believe. We can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Just like his disciples. Oh! The Holy Spirit helps us believe. With the Holy Spirit, we can know that God's word is true and that Jesus is risen, even though we weren't there. 